Hi, so in this video we're going to be running through how to do anything to a Zendesk uh, ticket using a Zendesk webhook. Um, <clears throat> so there's a few steps involved in doing this. Uh, firstly, you have to enable your API, create a token, create a webhook. Then we're going to be creating a trigger uh, that's going to be uh, kind of checking for the conditions we want for that thing to happen. Uh, and finally, uh, within that trigger, we'll have to input some JSON, which uh, we'll talk about and show you how to do. Uh, and uh, a really important thing with any uh, trigger where a ticket is updating itself is to check that there is a nullifying condition, uh, which we'll get into as well. But firstly, you might be wondering why use a webhook at all? Um, uh, you know, what, what, uh, why, why is this needed? Well, uh, firstly, um, Zendesk triggers uh, would be considered the engine of Zendesk and usually they would be used to make updates to tickets. However, there are certain things that tr triggers cannot do that webhooks ca can. For example, if you wanted to post a private message into the thread of the ticket, uh, this is where a webhook could come in. If you wanted to apply or add CCs to a ticket, you can't do that with Zendesk triggers. You can't update any numeric text or multi-line text fields using then there's triggers either. Uh, so this all has to come under webhooks. Uh, another reason why you might want to use a webhook is uh, to do something uh, inside of an app, like for example, a Sweethawk app, if you wanted to automatically apply a deadline X time in the future or create a calendar event um, based on something else that's happened, uh, you could do that using a webhook. So let's jump in and have a look at how this is going to work. So here we have a ticket um, and what we want to make happen is that when this ticket is created uh, based on the uh, customer service level, we have a private comment also automatically applied to the ticket at any point that a, um, an onboarding ticket is created where the customer service level is set to platinum. We uh, have a private comment saying this is a platinum customer. Um, kind of uh, make sure that this is done in uh, a, a fast amount of, amount of time or something like that. This is just a, an example, a basic example of how a webhook could be set up. So right now, just to show you how this is working, we're creating the ticket, nothing is happening. Uh, we just got this main comment that we've put in here. Um, uh, and uh, we do have uh, our task app kicking into gear um, on the right hand side where a, a task list has automatically been applied for this onboarding process where tasks can be checked off or um, uh, sub tickets uh, are automatically created and, and predefined. Uh, we do have automatically uh, added timers and what have you for certain things to be completed in a certain period of time, but we don't have that automatically added private comment. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, at the top right hand side of the screen, I'm going to go to uh, the um, admin center, uh, which is actually popped up in another browser window. So I'm going to drag it over here. Um, and then uh, we are going to go to our apps and integrations section here and then scroll down to webhooks. Um, okay, and then you, you might think, oh, I, I'm just going to create a webhook here. But just before we do this, uh, over in your Zendesk API, uh, settings here, what we want to do is we want to switch on our API. So under API, switch on uh, password access or token access. Um, and then you can, uh, you will need to create an API token. For example, if I go here, I'll call this one um, uh, test uh, um, API token. Um, and uh, this token will be used as the password for when we create our target. Uh, so I'm going to copy this token here um, off. Uh, of course, I'll be deleting this token after this video so the token doesn't work, but um, uh, we're going to need this token. So I'm going to click on save. I'll never see this token again. So you do have to copy that off and click on save here. So now we can go over to our webhook. Um, now that we've got Zendesk API turned on, we've copied off the token uh, and we can click on actions up here and create a webhook. So we're going to call this uh, webhook uh, kind of um, update ticket. Uh, we might give it an option uh, like a, a description, but essentially this is a fairly um, uh, kind of broad uh, webhook. It can do anything to the ticket. So something that I see many people doing is calling these webhooks precisely what 
uh, they intend to do to the ticket. But in the case of this webhook, uh, it can be called in any trigger to do anything. It's really what is uh, injected in the trigger, not the webhook, that actually does the thing. So ultimately, this is a, a fairly generic webhook to update, uh, make get a ticket to update itself. Um, so the next uh, part is we're going to uh, uh, put in an address here. Uh, so I'm just going to um, uh, grab a URL. So for um, if you'd like to follow along, uh, we do have a knowledge base article uh, that runs through this. If you go to our help center, sweethawk.com, and just search for webhook over here, um, how to create a webhook to change anything on a ticket. Uh, you can see here, uh, we've already created the API token. Now we're on to creating the webhook, and we're just going to copy uh, this uh, item here uh, and paste it into our uh, endpoint URL, and we're going to replace the, the the subdomain here with our subdomain up here. So I'm going to say help demo uh, desk, um, and we'll set it to put. Uh, we're going to be setting JSON, and we're going to set uh, basic authentication, not bearer token. Even though we are using an API token, the bearer token is usually used for developers. It's basic basic authentication, where we put in our um, email address. Uh, and then we can paste in that token that we copied off before. Uh, note that there is a kind of a, a bit of an oddity uh, that um, even though I've got slash token after my email address here, uh, and I, when I click on create, when it comes back in, it will make this password disappear, uh, and the, the slash token will disappear as well. I think it's uh, to do with the security um, uh, kind of reasoning behind why that happens. Um, I'm actually just going to change this uh, name here to uh, so that I can uh, find it easily as well. Uh, we'll say test ABC. Um, and so yeah, we've got our uh, webhook ready to go. Update ticket, uh, setting our URL slash API slash v2 slash tickets, put JSON, uh, basic authentication, uh, our email address slash token, and then putting our uh, token in here and clicking on create. Okay, so at this point, it's going to ask me uh, if I want to connect a webhook, or this webhook, to a trigger. Uh, well, since we haven't uh, created a trigger yet, uh, we um, uh, aren't going to do that. We're just going to skip this and leave without connecting. Uh, we'll be able to call this webhook at any point in any trigger, which is what we're about to do now over in uh, our triggers. So we can go to our objects and rules and then scroll down to triggers. Um, and so the trigger that we're going to be looking to create is say is, is when a ticket, this ticket is created. So when this onboarding ticket is created and the customer service level is platinum, then post that private comment. So if we go uh, over to uh, add trigger, uh, this is going to be relatively simple to set these rules. So apply a private comment uh, for platinum onboarding tickets like so. Um, and then I'm going to set my category uh, we're going to set uh, when the ticket is created and the um, form is onboarding like so um, and then uh, when the um, uh, what was it again uh, customer service level customer service level is platinum uh, then under actions, we can call the webhook. Uh, so we're going to call that webhook, um, and it was the one that we just created, test ABC. Uh, and this is where we can put in some JSON. Um, so uh, the JSON can be anything. Now, coming back to this article here that we do have on our knowledge base, we have a bunch of different examples of uh, JSON that you can enter. If you want to make a public comment, uh, here's an example, a private comment. Uh, change the subject line. If you wanted to set custom uh, ticket fields, you can do that. You can even uh, uh, add CCs to your ticket. Note that you can only add CCs on a uh, public comment. So all of these can just be copied and pasted in. So we're just going to make this um, a public, uh, sorry, a private comment. And we're going to copy that into our trigger, like so. 
and we're going to say this is a uh, 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 ticket uh, regarding uh, you know, regarding a uh, platinum. Did I get that right? Yeah, platinum uh, customer. Um, and you know, uh, we can put in whatever we want here, but uh, you, you see how it works. You're just going to type in your comment here, uh, and we're going to click on create. But before we click on create, this is where we do our final check now, uh, and this is where we're looking for another fine condition. And the reason why um, this is a really important to make sure that your trigger doesn't continue to fire is because we are updating a ticket. Uh, by the API, uh, and if uh, the trigger doesn't nullify, there, it, it, you know, if if it were to loop, it would continue to loop uh, instantaneously, indefinitely. So you would end up with thousands of updates uh, within a matter of minutes, um, and and that would be bad. Uh, so uh, in this case, a, a ticket is created is a um, uh, self nullifying condition because that ticket can only be created once but if we were looking uh, for when the ticket was updated then this would be really uh, not great uh, and we what, what we would want to do is to check for uh, or create another fine condition so if you weren't didn't have a self nullifying condition well like ticket is created what you could do uh, is to look for tags uh, so you could say tags contains none of the following um, a comment uh, added like so and then under here you would say add tags comment added so once this trigger fires uh, it checks that there isn't a tag there it fires it adds the comment and then it adds the tag so that this trigger cannot fire again uh, like I said uh, we don't need this for this one because we're going to when ticket is created but Yes, nullifying condition, very, very important. Okay, so I'm gonna click on create here. And now uh, that we've done that, uh, we're gonna go back to our ticket here and we're gonna create a new uh, client onboarding uh, ticket. And we're gonna see that trigger uh, fire that we just created. So I'm gonna do so that. And uh, we're gonna say, uh, use our macro, a Zendesk macro for our onboarding, uh, which is gonna predefine this ticket and set everything, including the uh, platinum level. Um, now, levels of customers might also be set by, by their user settings or their uh, organization settings. So this can all happen automatically if you wanted to. And I'm gonna submit this as open um, and we'll be able to see uh, when this is created, a trigger will fire and then bang, we've got our uh, private comment being added to the ticket as well um, and if we uh, and we've got our task list automatically being added as well but um, if we uh, look at the events log here of the ticket uh, this was the original um, uh, comment uh, being uh, applied and we had our, um, uh, uh, our a trigger fire um, uh, that uh, looked for the uh, webhook so where was that? Apply private comment for platinum onboarding tickets. That's when it uh, kind of fired. It pushed the comment to the, uh, the webhook, which then in turn updated the ticket. So yeah, that is um, how to go about creating a, a webhook in Zendesk to do things that triggers cannot do. Uh, let us know how you go. Um, if you're interested in Sweethawk apps and, and, and you know any of the things that you can see on the site here for whether that's applying tasks, lists or um, uh, kind of performing approvals, you know, uh, planning out uh, calendar events with your team, um, or kind of doing uh, timers, uh, whether that's first response SLA or OLAs or uh, what have you. Uh, check out the Sweethawk website or email us at sweethawk. Uh, doc, uh, sorry, um, support at sweethawk.com. Uh, thanks for watching.